If you want to write a book and become a best-selling author, you're in the right place. At Elite Online Publishing, we can help you create, publish, and market your book so that it becomes a number one bestseller. We work with a limited number of authors to ensure that they receive the best possible service. So if you want to learn how to write and publish a book that will empower you to smartly grow your brand, business, and credibility, apply today. We look forward to working with you. Hi, this is Melanie Johnson. Thanks for joining us for another great episode here. Listen, so many of you, especially nonfiction authors, have your book, but you don't know how to use it outside of book sales. So we have Mike Pitchner, Pitcher here today. And did I say that right, Mike? You got it, Pitcher, like baseball and beer. All right. And books, baseball, and beer, books. books. There you go. <laughs> So we are going to learn he is a master at leadership, but he has been a master at using his book for leverage for his business. So we're going to find out all about that and the best practices and use. Thanks, Mike, for coming today. You're very welcome. I'm glad to be here. All right. So tell us a little bit about yourself, your business background and your book that you wrote and why you wrote it. Yeah, I've been in business for more than 35 years, had leadership roles at Dell and Pitney Bowes and is also, I am also the former CEO of a company called Lease Plan USA. I decided to leave that role in 2017. And the reason I wrote my book is because for years I had trained people on the seven elements of leadership that I believe they are. I believe those seven elements are laugh, learn, listen, language, legacy, line up, and love. And right off the bat, you might be going, what the heck is Lanya? It's a Cajun French term. I am from Louisiana. That means a little something extra. Leaders do the little things that other people don't do. So I wrote that book in an effort to kind of explain my leadership concepts. But to be perfectly honest, I started with writing that book so I'd have five copies, one for my wife, one for my four daughters so that they could understand what I thought was important in life and what I thought was important in leadership. And then it got further than that where people expressed an interest. I left the workforce and I was able to train and speak and be able to use the book as a platform that says, if you believe these things are important, follow and maybe investigate what Mike Pitcher has to offer. And then it created my brand and who I am as a leadership speaker. Well, walk us through that a little bit and how you got from point A to point B. I mean, you had five books is what you're saying is what the plan was, but then how did you leverage that and get onto stage and get to get consulting gigs? What did you do to use the book to get those doors open? You know, that that's a great question. And what happens there is I had engaged several speakers throughout my career and mm -hmm. started to talk to them about some advice and coaching. And almost every one of them made the comment, that if you want to speak professionally, if you want to do things outside of the boardroom, that a book really is critical. It's almost like it's the ante in the game to say, mm -hmm. I have valuable content. People can look at it, download it. You can do videos on the book and they can experience Mike Pitcher and his leadership philosophy in different ways. So once I published the book, I used it as a tool for people to understand what I really considered important with regard to leadership. If I have a large corporation or someone, I will drop, you know, I will drop the book in the mail with a note free saying, hey, look, this is what I think is important. My leadership lessons are really people go, hey, Mike, some of that's common sense. And my response is, yep, but it's not common practice. So that are, and I try to practice what I preach. I use my book as like, this is Lanyap, a little something extra that I send to you so you'll understand what I think is important and what is important in being a leader today. Do you think it's important for business owners to invest in their story and tell their story and tell it in a book? Oh, without a doubt. You know, there are people that make a living just speaking on storytelling, one of my seven elements is language. And I believe that leaders and people of influence really should understand their story and how to tell it. My upbringing in Louisiana in an 805 square foot home with a dad that worked three jobs to put boys through college and the importance of education. 
I think those stories are so critical because long after people forget facts and figures and info, they remember a story because how the story made them feel. Did you uplift? Did you make them confident? Did you make them laugh? By the way, did you make them cry? Did you make them think? Those are the emotions we go through when people tell a story. My first chapter in my book is laugh. So think about that. Who writes a leadership book and starts with laugh? Laughter is an incredible emotion because people feel joy and feel good when you tell those stories. It's why so many speakers know those stories they go to that make someone smile or laugh. So I think the storytelling component is critical and your ability to effectively tell a story is critical in both leadership, professional speaking, and your life. I think that's so true. We tell our authors when they're writing their book, like we work with them to help create it. It's like, okay, we want to be able to take that person that's reading it on a journey where they're going to laugh, they're going to cry with you, and they feel all those emotions. Don't you agree that you think that like the reader gets connected to you when they're laughing and crying and getting those emotions? Oh, without a doubt. I think that's the connection. That's the human side of someone attaching to someone. And let's face it, when you look at people that are publishing books today, they're trying to tell their story in a meaningful, compelling way that connects someone and brings them along for the journey, that they're there with the author as the author goes through those trials and tribulations, those victories, those failures, those things in life that we all experience, but the author tries to walk them through that story and that journey. And at the end of it, they are better for it. What did they learn? What did they experience? What did they feel? And as they look back on that journey, they say, yep, Mike, I'm, bought, I'm glad you brought me with you. Now, are you having that effect when you send your book out to corporations? What kind of response are you getting? Is it, you know, for every 10 books you send out, you get one client or what kind of response do you think you're getting? You know, since I retired, I speak selectively. So it's not like I'm trying to do a hundred speaking engagements a year. I would tell you that I get a one in five response where someone, especially today on social media, such as LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook, where someone makes the comment that they got it and responds back to me. And I would tell you out of those, I usually book once they express that interest, I have a relationship with them that's 25% of the time, 20% of the time I can get a booking. Things have really loosened up. I am like, like the month of April this year, you know, we went through COVID and everything kind of went virtual. In the month of April this year, I have five speaking engagements, which is more than I had all of 2021 just because of what was happening with COVID. But that, you know, now I'm like, well, tap the brakes. We got to slow this down. I am retired and want to be much more selective, but I have fun doing it. I love being on stage. I love the contents of the book. People get a lot, have a lot of fun reading it. So it, it's enjoyable for me. I always say the F word is acceptable at work. And that F word is fun. Have a lot of fun doing what you're doing. I love that. And so do you send them the ebook or do you send them a paperback? What is your strategy? Well, in, it's interesting. I kind of do a little research on who that book is going to dig up their LinkedIn and kind of see what they think is important. Depending on it, I'll send obviously the book if I think that's a better approach or I send them the link and say, hey, you or anybody on your team can digitally download that book. I love it. That's good. So just having to do your research and finding out who your target market is and what the best approach is for that. Yep. You know, the piece of my book and the book is written the seven elements of leadership, but it has also been called a lesson in heartfelt relationships and heartfelt leadership. I do believe that. I laughed when I saw something from Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft on empathy, because he made the comment that it's the most important thing people could have today. And 25 years ago, at a, at a training, somebody told me, you better stay in sales because you'll never make a good CEO because you have too much empathy and you care too much. I honestly didn't think that existed. It's kind of like being too rich or too good looking. I didn't know that is really true. 
But today, especially where we are in the COVID environment, people want to know you care. People want to know you have empathy for where they are. So, so those are things I look when companies start to talk about health and mental wellness and caring about their employees. That's right in my target audience because my seven elements go to those things where people go, you not only care, you know, you don't only care about the numbers and the company and production, you care about us as individuals. And that's what I think leaders have to do in the future. Well, you are right. You are very on ahead of your time, I want to say. You're right on point. Gary Vandercheck, who is like a leader in the social media world and marketing world, he just wrote a new book and it's all about being kind and have being empathy in the workplace. So you were ahead of the curve. You were talking about it before he was. And he was <laughs> ahead of everything. So you're and I, you're it's really funny because I was being called soft and it's the soft skills. And now people are realizing it's really hard. And it's actually human skills that are needed that instead of people being personnel, you actually have a personal relationship with them. And I think that's one of the elements that leaders are figuring out today is people want to know they care about them and people Mm -hmm. want to know that they care about more than simply profit. And I think that's happening in America today. Which is really nice to hear. So tell us about how you worked social media and what you've done with your book on social media or how you suggest someone using it. Well, I think today that LinkedIn is one of the most amazing platforms for business that are out there. We've kind of made ourselves open and vulnerable on a platform where people can look in, see our our professional lives, understand what's important to us. I look at people's threads and what they post and what they comment on to see what they think is really important. I think LinkedIn for regular content production that promotes the book or comes from the book gives people these small snippets of information that they make the evaluation. Is that book valuable? Can it help me? Would I enjoy it? And it kind of opens the door for the book, which then opens the door for other relationships that you can have. You mentioned Vaynerchuk. I follow Vaynerchuk as well. And he says about producing content. It's not about content that makes you feel good. It's about content that makes the reader feel like that is valuable. Comments about being kind, comments about being compassionate, stories in a workplace that someone can read and go, I can do that. A video that helps people understand why leadership is important. You don't need a VP title. You don't need to be a CEO to be a great leader. Great leadership happens in schools and churches, in businesses, in PTAs, in publishing, where someone is there and takes a leadership role and can influence the behavior of others. It's happening all around us. How do you lead with your book? So, I mean, any author, not just we know your book is about leadership, but how can people lead with their book and their content and best ways for them to position themselves in the marketplace? Again, I think a book is now today's calling card Mm -hmm. says, let me show you what I think is important. Let me look inside of who you really are. So the book for those people, and it's very interesting because today's attention span seems to be shorter, but a book is a physical way to allow someone inside so they know what you think is important. What's at the heart of the matter? What are the things that you say, do, reflect on that they say, yes, I want to get to know Mike Pitcher better. I want to get to understand Gary Vaynerchuk or Mark Cuban better, this really successful person. How'd they get there? You know, people talk about overnight success. I don't know if you're familiar with Blake Shelton, that he's some overnight success. My daughter saw Blake Shelton 20 years ago in Austin, Texas, in a room with 200 people work their butt off to become overnight successes. What's that story sound like? That's the piece of in a book that you won't get in a 90 second interview. That's the insights from a book that you won't get in a media or social post, social media post that's 30 seconds or 45 seconds. So true. 
All right. So a lot of people in your position have a hard time writing a book. Now, obviously, I think when you wrote it, you were thinking, well, not many people are going to read it. Just my close little circle is going to read it. So maybe it wasn't as intimidating when you started. What was the process that you went through in the thought press process for creating the book, structuring the book? You're going to laugh at this. So I was in the process of writing that book for 15 years. Oh my God. I had stuff on a floppy disk. I had stuff on a little three inch drive. I had stuff on a memory stick and I had stuff on post-it notes. So really the change in my life was a professor at Emory that said, hey, pitch, I'm getting tired of hearing this story about a book. You got to go do it. I'd suggest you get some help. I actually used a writing coach. So I used a coach that structured, she told me we'd be done in six months. And I said, that's crazy because I was a CEO. But about 15 months later, I was holding the book in my hand. I advise people that if they're working today in a full-time job, it's a great thing to use someone that will coach you through the process. We'll do some of the editing. We'll take some of the work and say, let's work on structure. Let's work on this story. It's always great to have a coach. So I was blessed with Anita Henderson that helped me write a book. And then she handled the process of, you know, the publishing, finding a publisher, working through the details of a cover. So as is with anything in your life, if you're able to find a coach that understands how to make you better, it's generally worth the investment to find that coach. Yeah, I agree. I always tell people, it's like, you know, you're going to remodel your house. So either you can learn how to lay the tile and do the electric and put the new plumbing in and watch a bunch of YouTube videos and everything's going to go wrong and you might have a flood in your house because of it. Or you can hire an expert or a general contractor and they have all the right people and it goes really smooth and everything gets done. And then you just get to step in it, put the new furniture in and you're ready to go. Kind of the same thing. You're absolutely right. Hey, rich athletes have coaches. Why? Because it makes them better. Speaking professionals, I had some coaches that kind of took the time, put me under their wing. It always is helpful to have someone that knows and understands the process. Absolutely. So tell us, where do you think the future of publishing is going? You know, it, it's amazing. And the ability, the ability to take an idea from idea or concept and create it and produce a hard copy book has really kind of never been easier. I think the future of publishing is when I want it, how I want it, delivered to my custom desires, and, you know, you produce a book. I do think what's different may be the distribution in publishing, because now the ability to deliver it digitally on this device means anywhere, anytime I want it, 24-7, 365. So I think this will change from, and by the way, there are still the lovers of a hard copy book that want to slide those pages through their fingers, right? Digital media and digital delivery will be there. I think we will see a lot more content delivered so that you're able to have a book on any subject, any time, any way you want it delivered. Yeah, I think you're going to see different formats coming through and different ways that we're using it. We've got NFTs coming into the forefront, non-fungible tokens. That's opening up a whole new market where books are going to live on the blockchain or in the metaverse. So yep. there's a whole new world for that for every industry coming up. So I'm anxious to see what that's going to bring. Now, and you know, they say technology is changing at such a rapid pace. Could you put on a pair of glasses and tap it and have a book read to you in your ear. I mean, the technology that's out there, technology is supposed to change five to seven times faster in the next quarter century than it did in the last 25 years. I want you to put your arms around that and think about from 2000 to today and then rapid fire that five to seven times faster. I think it's going to impact everything we do. Publishing is not going to be spared from that. I think that you'll see rapid fire changes in the way we consume content, the platform it is on, where it's delivered, and just about anything you want to read, learn about is going to be at your fingertips. And it's, I don't know how our minds are going to keep up, to tell you the truth. It's hard enough to keep up. You know, I don't know a tenth of what my cell phone does. 
we now we are in that same boat and i have my children actually show me hey dad you know you can do this on your phone and i'm clicking away one button at a time <laughs> i love it thank you mike for coming today and sharing all your wisdom we really appreciate it i appreciate it if you want to write a book and become a best-selling author, you're in the right place. At Elite Online Publishing, we can help you create, publish, and market your book so that it becomes a number one bestseller. We work with a limited number of authors to ensure that they receive the best possible service. So if you want to learn how to write and publish a book that will empower you to smartly grow your brand, business, and credibility, apply today. We look forward to working with you.